I, I got it started, I founded it back in 1991, so 32 years, but I've taken some intermissions. I've taken some time out, and I've come back. Right. So, I've mostly been around. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't let her go. Yeah. Has a lot changed in those intermissions? Absolutely. The well, Regent Park has completely changed. We started at Forty Oaks, um, June 1st, 1991, and uh, you know there were no streets. You couldn't drive through Regent Park, and it was all um, it, it wasn't mixed housing. So there was no arts. There were no arts programs at all in this community. And so for me, I grew up with lots of arts, and I thought, well, this community needs some arts. So I found some like-minded people and the res joined with residents and other volunteers and homeless people, and we just uh, found a basement at Forty Oaks and made a pitch and got it started. And then later we moved to St. Cyril, and then we are now we're here. Many people had shame around living here. Um, it was violent. Um, a lot of people would not walk through this community. Um, how, on, the other, on the flip side, there were a lot of people who were very supportive of each other here, and you did feel a strong community here. So I always felt welcomed once I was in, in Regent Park. I felt so welcomed I didn't want to leave because the people were so kind. Um, so it was a real divide between sort of the rest of the downtown and this community. Mm -hmm. um. Do you have anything to share? About? Yeah, I can. I can tell you how I got involved. Uh, I was asked to donate by a, fr a friend who was a former board member, and at that time I was um, looking to give back to the community. And I'm a fine artist. I draw and I paint. So I said, rather than just giving money, why don't I give my time? So I started volunteering 12 years ago, and I haven't left. <laughs> So I have gone through, um, I've been actually co-chair of the board for 12 years and seen it go through ups and downs and I became lead um, program coordinator for the adults and seniors. An art and, teacher. An art teacher. Yes, an art teacher uh, right up to COVID and right up to COVID we had to close the studio because everywhere, everywhere closed up. And Shauna had the great idea to do art kits. So I became the lead art kit designer and coordinator. And over the course of COVID, we actually gave out over, I think it was 5,800 5, kits. So we had a program whereby a lot of the people you see today came to our side door. They couldn't come up. We'd have the kits all prepared uh, by volunteers and a, a skeletal staff and we gave them out like you would a takeout meal. And they kept coming back for a year and a half. And we just kept out ma making more kits, and the kits would have instructions in two languages, have a small amount of art supplies, and um, we'd see their work come back, and a lot of the work was shown here, and a lot, and some of the work sold. So it was a really uh, good way to keep in, in touch with the community, and the community kept coming back. We also started a meal program at the time, and we gave away frozen, frozen meals because we do have a program in here that everyone who does art gets a, um, a, either a hot meal or a healthy snack. So that food, and even now since COVID, our, le our, less, our, our current appeal is for donations to help us continue the food program because since COVID, we've seen a huge rise in the need of uh, food and food insecurity is on the rise. So we realize that a lot of people actually, even as you see them here today, we put out a little bit of food and it's gone in a second. People, you know, are, are still needing and uh, if we can help them a little bit. They come here for art but also for company, community. Many people have been isolated. A lot of people um, have gone through some hard times. So coming here sort of takes the edge off the hard times and they can make friends and have a meal and, and be artists. And, and that's a bit of an oasis, so right? So we've been very lucky in finding a body of donors and foundations that we send out appeals to every year. We have a fundraising committee and their big job is to just keep us 
open. So we're very lucky to have this space. We've had this space since the building opened. In fact, this space was built for Art Heart because as Shauna said, we've been in the community for 32 years. This building has only been here for just, just had its 10th birthday last September. So we've been here. Uh, we have pictures of it as bare walls, but actually it wasn't even walls. It was before it had walls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was built for Art Heart because um, the, the people that founded uh, Daniel Spectrum realized that they needed arts in the community. This became a cultural hub. And since we've been here for 20 years before that, it was automatic that we would be asked if we would join. But it's, you know, it's it's still, it's fabulous to be here, but it's not inexpensive to be here. So we are always looking for support, financial support to be here. So, that's yes. Yeah, wonderful. <laughs> so, um, what kept you coming back for 12 years? Me personally? Right. <laughs> that's a very good question. <laughs> I feel I can make a difference. I know that when I was actually helping teach, um, people would actually just say it made them so happy to come here and they, they, they were learning new techniques and they were learning uh, new ways to look at subject and new materials and they, they wanted some support. And, uh, and then just to keep the organization running, I realized there's a lot of, it just, I really find it has so much value to me personally to give to this organization. So that's what keeps me coming back. And I can see it in the, the participants and in the staff and keeping the staff um, paid. <laughs> that all, you know, keeps it. Keeps and the, volunteers and, coming in. And yep. volunteers. So we've got a lot of community partners and um, they, you know, they do collaborative projects with us, and you know, just the outreach that we've had over 32 years, of course, is quite deep. So a lot of people will come back and say, "I brought, I was here as a kid. I'm bringing my child." Actually, we have someone on the board right now who came here as a child, and now she's she's volunteering it to be, and she is on our board. So you know, just 32 years is a long time to be in a community, and we've made a difference, and and it shows. Wow. So. I think focus started around then too, Regent Park focus, right? Was it also like in the early 90s? Right? Yes, I think 30, 30, more than 30 years. So yeah. around the same time, like I remember meeting Adonis and he was, um, that program, focus was in the basement of one of the buildings. And uh, so it's amazing these programs can stay this long in the community and generations use them, right? Go, go through these doors. Um, I think arts really make a difference. Access to creativity is, is, is not just about how you're going to get through your day in a rigid way. I mean, people think, okay, how am I going to survive? Where am I going to get my food, housing? People have a lot of worries. But if they come here with their children or they come here if they're living alone and they're lonely, it is like an oasis, like I said before. And with creativity, it's a non-judgmental environment. Um, and it's a chance to play and express yourself. But make friends and make a community around art, around something that's as wonderful as art, as opposed to a community around a crisis or an issue. It's, just, it's a really um, empowering environment and, and, a, and a happy and warm environment. And I, I think that's the impact on the community. Is maybe people need that. Well, I've also, Maybe we need that, right? I've also seen that because a lot of our work is visual, um, it's non-verbal, and a lot of people from different cultures who don't even speak the same language can meet over a visual art. So I think that's really important. It's also working with your hands. It takes you sort of out of your headspace. And you were also mentioning over COVID particularly, a lot of the seniors were stuck in their small spaces and they couldn't see their friends. And, uh, you know, by doing, having the kits, for example, they still were able to look forward to it every week to, to, to be uh, creative, to come up with a solution for this little project we gave them. And I think, you know, um, it just brought people together uh, outside of their, you know, what you just said, they're, uh, they're looking for either housing or food or... Um, you know the basics. This gives you a, it, it nurtures their soul. It's, enrichment. it's an enrichment for their, their sense of self, their accomplishment. I mean, there's, there's so much. And the community. And the community. That's right. We also have programs like youth employment, um, mm -hmm. and different. Like we, we have a lot of volunteers come through who are getting their community hours for school uh, or placement students. Med learning, students from learning UT. how to you know do casework and. So it's, it's also a learning place. We do a lot of mentorship here. 
I mean, so that's that's an impact as well. It's sort of for community work in itself, not even to do with art, just community work in itself. For the, the last, we were trying to figure out how many, at least half a dozen years, we've had a an annual show of the participants' work. So if you walk through the halls, and I hope you do, and just scan some of the work, this is all from the participants, children as well as seniors and adults. And it's a certain uh, sense of pride that they can have in bringing their friends and their family, and they can show other people what they've accomplished. And, uh, and it also coincides, May 31st, with tomorrow, which is the birthday and we thir turn 32. So 32 years we've been serving this community, and so we wanted to sort of combine it and say, you know, come celebrate with us. And then lastly, yes, it's also a recognition That's event. true, yes. We are recognizing the Ontario Trillium Foundation and the Ontario government uh, for two very large and generous grants that we got last year that have carried us through this year. Um, so it's a recognition grant for Trillium. And we have at 6.30, we have um, MVP, Kristen Wong Tam is coming to make a few remarks and we'll have an opportunity to thank her. It's an absolute honor to be here with all of you. I know that this is a celebration and of course the speeches should be short and more and more cake should be served. Um, it's been quite remarkable for me just even walking into the space and seeing how electrically happy the children are. And it doesn't even matter the fact that they're here before the cake uh, which I'm sure had something to do with the extra big smiles. But quite honestly, this space is just filled with community love. Just for a moment, just take a look around you. Just take a look at what's on the walls. Think about who in our community created them. And then the fact that they get to see their work hung up on the wall for so many people to enjoy. Not every day does an organization celebrate 32 extraordinary community years of service. And it is so important for each and every single one of us to continue to champion Art Heart uh, because these organizations don't always stay without our community support. Whether it's the support of funders who may be in the room or sponsors or just you as community members who give what you do. And I know sometimes it doesn't take a lot. The community can stretch a dime into a dollar, and I've seen that time and time again. In my time at City Hall and now at Queen's Park, I do recognize that when government steps up to help, communities can flourish. And so the more that we do, the more that you are able to do. That's It is. It's absolutely right. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Thank you. I used to be a, and my friend Rick Wong can attest because he's been to my, my former art gallery, um, but there was a time when I had a contemporary art gallery. And to think about the children of Regent and the youth and the adults and the seniors coming together to actually create visual arts, visual arts that give our storytelling visual expression, ability to allow that work to sit for others to interpret, to actually convey a story is really powerful. And Regent has been full of those stories. And so when I see the work actually be produced and I see a, a room full of exciting art materials, art supplies are very exciting. If anybody has that little geek in you, um, you know that when you walk into a place full of the, the paint and the adhesives, and the canvas, and the paper, and the charcoal, you can probably get very excited. And I've seen now what happens when you provide the materials, and the space, and I would say, some direction, some simple guidance, and then you just say to the young people, to the youth, to the adults, go ahead, tell your story, make it. That's the best gift you can give any child. It's truly the best gift you can give anybody who has something to say. So thank you to each and every single one of you who made this organization great. 32 exceptional years. To the entire board who is here, and some of you may not be here to join us, but to every single one of you who've given this organization a little bit of time, a little bit of money, I know you're doing it because it gives you something back. I'm very aware of that. So keep giving, keep making, keep creating, 
keep inspiring, and pass the baton along. And hopefully, we'll see you at 64 years. I probably won't be around, but the organization will be around. I think there's going to be some big drumming soon. Yes. And if anybody's actually heard taiko drums, you will know that your heart is going to jump out of your chest. Now that's in a big open space. I can imagine that when those taiko drums are, are going and those drummers are actually just doing their thing, um, especially with these low ceilings, uh, we're all going to be, be vibrating, not just the floors and the ceiling. So before all that happens, what I want to do is just say thank you by providing this special congratulatory scroll on, on behalf of myself and my entire team from Toronto Centre, and just to extend the heartfelt congratulations to Heart, uh, Art, uh, Art Heart, excuse me, and to, and to say thank you to Shauna in particular, the founder, the founder of Art Heart, 32 years later, she's still here, she's still giving, uh, quite honestly. Thank you, thank you Shauna. We're just going to take one photo. If any of the kids want to join us, come on over. and board and for participants for being part of our heart. And tonight we just want to take a minute to thank a couple of people who have been with us for a long time. Sandy Wong. Sandy, here's a clap for you. What would this place be without you? Thanks for your dedication to Art Heart and leading us all with strength, perseverance, compassion, love of art, commitment to excellence, and good humor. You've made a positive difference in so many people's lives. Would you like to give, we have one more to give out. Thank you. Miss Patty Pereira. Okay, so Miss Patty Pereira has been with Arnard for over 20 years. Without you, there would be no Arnard. We wish along with Shona. So we appreciate and value you, Miss Patty. Thanks for everything you do. Okay. People know Patty, Patty is our fundraiser and she brings a lot of funds into Art Heart. We appreciate her for that. Thank you, Miss We love you. And I love you. Okay, to our participants, once again, I'd like to say that without you, 
our doors would be closed. If it wasn't for you, this wouldn't be possible today. So we want to say we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Keep doing what you're doing. Your commitment, passion, everything is highly appreciated. Um, I forgot to acknowledge Rosita. Um, Rosita is a very good volunteer and participant. Wendy, Diana, we thank you. Jane, Colin, thanks everybody. Okay, so with you, I'd have to cry for another Yay. 64 years or 100. Thank you once again. We love and appreciate you. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now we are going to have a little bit of entertainment by our Taiko Dojo, or from our Taiko Dojo, led by Brenda. Okay, say hello to Brenda, everybody, and her crew. Okay, Brenda. Kristen Wong Tam here, um, our constituent in Ontario. Um, lots of participants, the whole board of directors. Um, we have children, seniors. Um, our full board of directors is here tonight, our volunteer fundraising people, and it's just been an incredible um, evening of celebration. So I've been on the board for two years, almost, not even quite two years. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think I found out about Art Heart through Art Connects TO, which was an Instagram page that was established during the pandemic by one of our volunteers to share um, artwork of local artists in, in the Toronto region and I think she post yeah she's posted um, on the Instagram page that they were looking for board members and it 
seemed like a great fit for me because I wanted to get back working in the community again, volunteering. And I am an artist as well, so I have that interest. So I contacted them and had my meeting and I've been with them ever since. And it's a wonderful group of people. They are authentic, generous, just so welcoming and supportive and I, I love the people that are on the board and the people that I get to work with. And sometimes they come down and volunteer at the studio as well. So it's, it's been incredible. Uh, my name is Jennifer Say and um, I'm on the board of directors at Art Park. My name is Brenda, Brenda Joy Lim, and I'm the leader of Inner Truth Taiko Jojo. We practice here at Art Heart um, two nights a week, Mondays and Thursdays. It's really beautiful that Art Heart is celebrating an anniversary, so it's really great for the community to be able to come together and have an opportunity to celebrate because there's a lot of times when there's other things that are affecting the community that we have to mobilize, you know, that can be sad events or invites that are events that are making us angry, but we also need events where we can celebrate and so it's really wonderful to have this opportunity. This place is some, I, it has meaning to me on a lot of levels. Um, I, I'm very grateful to have a space that we can practice our taiko drumming, but also because Regent Park has had like such a long history in the Toronto community, and I mean, really, I feel like in some ways, you know, the, the original history of the original Regent Park sometimes is lost in the greater, you know, ideas of Toronto. So I'm really grateful that there are places like Focus and others that are really always trying to keep those, that history alive and keep building the community with roots, roots connected to the history. Um, rather than just a new community coming in and making a new identity, like really remembering the history is so important. My name is Victoria Brown, but here everyone calls me Vicky, but Cynthia, one of the coordinators, she refused to call me Vicky, which is nice. She calls me Victoria all the time. So anyway, when I started to come here at Heart, what I fully appreciated was that everyone is treated equally and everyone is treated as an adult, you do what you want, paint what you want. If you want instructions, then there's Sandy, who you just interviewed. She and there's some other volunteers that they're into, they're artists, I have to say. They would may show you, but you ask. They don't, you know, like, how should I say? They don't make you get overwhelmed. Right. They don't impose. No, you, and, and that's, as I said, I really love that. I like doing my own, and if I need help, I ask. Tomorrow is the birthday of here at 32 years old. Yeah, and still going, and I hope it continue to go, whether I'm here or not. <laughs> I'm Patty. I'm Beata. I started volunteering on Thursday and I work with a particular artist, his name is Gregory, and uh, so I help him paint. He has some physical disabilities or different abilities and um, we collaborate, the two of us, and we paint and actually I just bought one of his paintings and you did? Thrilled, you did? Um, because I believe um, when I first started here, I had no idea about this space, and I would love it if more and more people knew about the space and knew about our heart, because um, the adult program, this is what I'm involved in, uh, I think it's an amazing place for people to come 
They are so talented and they have the opportunity to mingle and paint and interact and have a lunch. It, it's just a really enjoyable space and I, I really would love more people to know about it. Absolutely. I've been fundraising for Art Heart for the last 21 years. Um, along with the, the founder, Sean O'Connell. So, so her and I worked together really hard to um, raise the necessary funds to keep, to keep it going. Yeah. And what keeps you coming? And what keeps me here? I have just seen so much transition over the years, so much, so many changes in the community, in Art Heart itself. One of the things I really love about Art Heart is that most organizations will support either kids or youth or seniors. Um, but Art Heart is a, uni a unique organization that supports people that are from preschool all the way up to seniors, people with different abilities, from different cultural backgrounds. Um, they have an uh, they have a partnership with the Native Cultural Center as well, which is really great. And, um, it's worked hard to establish partnerships with the Indigenous community. Um, so I just love the diversity of its work. And they learn all kinds of different art forms. And it's not just about the art, it's about people being able to be creative together, um, make friendships, reduce isolation, and um, kids to meet one another, and I love their youth employment program, so they hire kids and employ kids from Regent Park, which is really cool as well. My name is Julia. I come from China. Yeah. Where in China? Yeah, Beijing, capital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, and how long have you worked here for? Uh, for our work? Yeah. Uh, almost seven years. Yeah. yeah. Uh, some friends tell me, it's a uh, Tell me they have our center, so I learned uh, from a new, new. I before I did in the painting. This after I learned more and I can paint. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, how um, how do you feel about this place? Oh, I love it. Yeah, the people are very friendly. Yeah, and teach us more interesting things, and uh, we have uh, more. Uh, contact the person. They're like a bridge. Everybody is a communication is here. Yeah, very, very nice. I appreciate here getting over the place. Yeah. My name is Nathan. Why do you come to Art Heart? It gets me away from all the world that I can be in my own world and just create and do crazy stuff. What, what did you create in Art Heart? Well, uh, the shirt is one of them. I just like a lot of color. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And please follow our social media platforms. And for more information, please visit our website. Thank you.